Section 8 kicks off our conversation on full truckload transportation, also known as FTL. In fairly general terms, full truckload transportation is defined as the use of a common carrier to transport goods from a single location to a single destination, with the shipper or consignee paying for the use of the entire truck slash trailer during a specific period of time. Second bullet, FTL transportation services can be provided by common carriers, trucking companies, but of course private carriers, freight brokers, or freight forwarders as we defined them in an earlier section of this module. For the most part, FTL loads are typically transported in 53-foot trailers, but there are 48-foot trailers also in use. We're going to have a look at how those trailers are configured in just a moment. We want to provide a quick visual of 53 versus 48 foot trailers or vans as they're sometimes called, especially from a space capacity perspective. The one we're looking at on the top, it's actually 52 and a half feet described as a van. It's called a 53 footer, probably the most commonly used trailer out there. We see some height capabilities there on the left hand side. Most importantly, 3,950 cubic feet capacity and space in an FTL. As it relates to a 48 footer, which is actually 47 and a half foot from the van on the inside, 3,555 cubic feet. As we said, the 53 footers are most common, but a 48 footer can be used, especially when freight has a tendency to be a bit more heavy and the 53 foot van just can't be used because the weight capacity of the trailer will be taken up long before the space capacity. But as we said, typically 53 footers are used for FTL moves, for LTL moves, and intermodal moves for that matter. This is just a quick visual for the types and capacity of FTL trailers. We have that 53 footer on the left and a 48 foot dry van as they are commonly known, non-refrigerated dry van on the right hand side. Both of these are dry vans. Let's talk a little bit about the FTL service offering. The first thing we'll say is that the core service offering of the FTL market revolves around economies of scale and delivery times. In general, as we state in our first sub bullet, FTL tends to be less expensive overall than less than truckload services. That means the price a shipper can get for the use of a full 53 footer is typically less than LTL services that would amount to a quantity of freight that went in a 53 footer. The other component of this story is time. Second sub bullet, as part of the tail end of an import supply chain, FTL services can be used when time is of the essence. For example, direct delivery without any stops at LTL terminals. This is a pretty important point as it relates to cumulative lead time, focusing specifically on the truck lead time that is part of overall cumulative lead time. LTL freight isn't necessarily going to go from point A to point B. It's going to stop at terminals along the way. Depending on the distance between point A and point B, there could be a one terminal stop where goods are loaded onto another truck for final delivery. If it's a really long distance, Seattle to Atlanta, as an example, it's likely that LTL freight will stop in more than one terminal. FTL is usually a straight shot from point A to point B. As such, there's a time component there. A quick trade tip. FTL services are often used when shipping goods from a transload facility near a port to an inland distribution center. We have some examples of that. We'll also talk about transload using intermodal rail transportation, but it is not unusual to see FTL loads moving out of a transload facility to multiple locations around the U.S. Moving on to the service offering, above and beyond the core point A to point B FTL transportation services, FTL carriers have a number of support activities that they will engage in, depending on the needs of the shipper and the consignee. Of course, scheduling and coordination of trailer positioning this can be done by the carrier itself, or if an FTL load is contracted for through a freight broker, they can do that too. Team driver service, if time is really of the essence, a more expensive service can be contracted for, where two drivers will go from, say, Seattle to Miami and switch off back and forth the entire way without stopping. 
for highly sensitive cargo, computer servers, things of that nature. An air ride truck can be contracted for with extra special shock absorbers to accommodate any movement in the truck. Refrigerated trailers, of course, can also be contracted for. Continuing on, driver load unload. This is important because in many, many instances, the driver will not engage in loading or unloading. They're just there to drive. And if a driver does help, maybe they're being a nice person, but more than likely, there'll be an additional charge for a driver load or unload. We'll talk more about that later on. Another one that shippers sometimes don't think about, the need for an inside delivery, where a 53-foot load, maybe it contains furniture. Maybe it contains those computer servers that we spoke of a minute ago that have to be taken inside a building, perhaps a server farm in Ohio. Those are inside deliveries. Past the first threshold, as it's known, there are additional charges for that too. It's a service that's offered by FTL truckers. Another, which has become quite popular in the age of e-commerce and such, white glove deliveries, where the trucking not only takes place in a full trailer load format, but goods are offloaded, taken inside a facility, inside a building, and maybe furniture is assembled. And the dunnage or the cartons are taken away. Truckers will offer that service too. Clearly, additional charges for that will be levied, but the service is out there. Also, temporary labor for the assembly that we spoke of as part of the white glove service. FTL carriers, freight brokers, third-party logistics companies can all help coordinate these types of services. It's just a matter of knowing what service is going to be required. Getting down to brass tacks around FTL pricing structures, it is definitely different from drayage. It is way different from LTL and considerably different from intermodal. Let's get into those details. Full truckload pricing can vary based on the origin, destination, the carrier themselves. Maybe it's an owner operator or a domestic freight forwarder slash broker. Services that point A to point B FTL service can be contracted for by the mile. Or maybe this is a little bit easier to understand, a flat fee per load. As an example, from Salt Lake City to Denver, Colorado for $1,000. Or 50 cents a mile with an $800 minimum. It all depends. It's just important to know what the pricing structure is going to be for FTL. Is it by the mile? Is it a flat fee per trailer load? What's the fuel surcharge going to be, etc. There are a number of factors that comprise FTL pricing, and needless to say, at the tail end of an import supply chain, what those factors are need to be understood from both a service perspective and a cost perspective, especially as it relates to the final calculation of landed cost. Trade tip, and it shouldn't be any secret, we just mentioned it a second ago, FTL pricing often, if not always, includes a fuel surcharge. Based on that Department of Energy table that we looked at a couple of sections ago, let's discuss a supply chain perspective that deals with this subject of asset-based operators versus brokers. We defined them both earlier. Let's bring a little bit more detail to the story. One key distinction that importers must understand when contracting for full truckload domestic on forwarding is that of an asset-based common carrier versus a truck broker. Both are capable of providing FTL services around the country, but there are some very important differences that exist between the two. Second paragraph. The biggest difference is that asset-based carriers operate their own equipment, trucks and trailers basically, whereas truck brokers do not own their own equipment and act as a middle person in coordinating loads between shippers and actual equipment operators. It should be pointed out that truck brokerage has changed and that load boards that we defined and talked about earlier are often used to match loads to equipment. And as we said earlier, parenthetically, a load board is an online platform that brokers and or equipment operators use to find loads that match their location, geographic scope, meaning where they're willing to go with a full truck load, their own time constraints and the prices that they want to charge. Last paragraph. In both cases, it is important for the shipper 
to be working with common carriers and truck brokers that are properly registered and authorized to operate through the U.S. Department of Transportation and its Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, which we also defined as that entity that certifies things like authority to operate, along with required insurance and surety bond. Finally, shippers should also be aware of the fact that common carriers who do have their own assets sometimes also operate as truck brokers supplementing their own fleets with third parties, essentially owner operators. That's not unusual at all. It's not a problem as long as the shipper understands that. Some other things to think about in the world of FTL pricing structures. What are the cargo characteristics? Is it very dense cargo? Is it voluminous cargo? Is it hazardous material as another key consideration? Does it shift in transit? Is it high value merchandise? That's what we mean by cargo characteristics. What's the equipment type needed? A dry 53 footer versus a reefer trailer. What type of service level? Is it a standard move from San Francisco, California to Des Moines, Iowa? Or is there an expedited service required that might involve team drivers? What's the time of year? Is it peak season versus slack season? which would dictate the availability of equipment and drivers around the country. At any time of year, second to the last sub-bullet, what is the availability of drivers and equipment in specific markets? Not to mention that there's a general shortage, pretty critical shortage of drivers in the country that has driven up, no pun intended, the actual fees charged by FTL service providers. And then another one that sometimes shippers and consignees don't think of is the cargo loose versus palletized? That becomes an important consideration as well, especially if a driver agrees to provide loading or unloading services. What else must we consider on the pricing structure side of things? Well, one big one is the origin and destination location. Not only the distance between the two, the longer the distance, the more expensive it being, but also things like a rural pickup area into an urban delivery area or vice versa. Of course, we already said this second sub bullet, the distance between the origin and destination is super important. What's the total weight? Is it hazmat? And what are the liability features of the cargo? Meaning really high value cargo versus cargo that a 53 is worth $20,000. You could have a 53 footer full of material that's worth a half a million dollars. That matters too especially when it comes to pricing. We'll finish up with a trade tip and we'll see some examples in just a second. Many FTL carriers, as well as truck brokers, offer online quoting tools. Let's have a look and see what a couple of them look like. This is a screenshot of a typical online quoting tool taken offline, kept anonymous. We're just here to illustrate how some of these tools work. We have another one as well We'll also show an LTL version of online quoting tools. What do we have here? There are a couple points at the very top as it relates to full truckload that are pretty important to mention. We'll note right below the title full truckload FTL, partial load and volume freight quotes. This has to do with the amount of space taken up in a trailer and how much we use the weight capacity of a trailer as well. In the trucking world, where it says partial load slash volume, this is very relevant and will come up during our LTL conversation as well. If a shipper has between 7 and 14 pallets and wants to go FTL, that's considered a partial load, about a half a truckload as it relates to the number of pallets one can fit in a 53-footer. From a volume perspective, anywhere between 801 to 1,799 cubic feet has certain implications as well. This is really the cutoff point between what is considered LTL cargo, less than truckload, and full truckload. The point here is, especially from a volume perspective, if we are contracting for FTL, but we're not using up all the space in the truck, there might be some extra charges associated with that. On a full load basis, anything over 15,000 pounds or 15 or more pallets or space required on truck is between 1,800 and 3,200 cubic feet. That's considered a full load. This particular example was chosen because it makes good reference to this difference 
between weight-based calculations and volume-based calculations. The first, partial load volume, talks about being between 7 to 14 pallets or 801 to 1,799 cubic feet, whereas a full load is considered anything over 15,000 pounds or 15 or more pallets or the space required is from 1,800 to 3,200 cubic feet. The pricing is going to be different. From there, one fills in their shipment details and the quote will pop up. Always super important. The shipper, the consignee, has to know what the origin zip code is and the destination zip code. Without that, there's really nothing to talk about. Number of packages in the shipment, package type, cartons, wooden crates, drums, palletized, not palletized, the content description, what is the merchandise, which will help to determine the value of the merchandise, total weight in pounds, the truck type on the right hand side, 53 footer, 48 footer, a reefer truck, a requirement to check if the goods are hazardous, that will change the pricing rather dramatically, the space needed in the truck as we see here, that takes us back to this whole partial load slash volume story and then any particular comments maybe some additional services needed and then the name and contact of the person asking press get quote and off you go this example which was taken off of a, a common carriers website a little more visual and a little bit more diversified too because as we see at the very top one can click on an LTL load a time critical service volume LTL which is another reference to what we were speaking of a moment ago about volume and space requirements. Expedited on the far right. We happen to click on straight up truckload as we see in the darker color, as we see in the darker shade on this particular screenshot. There's some information required. Is it from the shipper, the consignee, or a third party? What's the contact info? Once again, the origin and destination. Zip, city, state. Pickup date, delivery date, click if an appointment is required. If an appointment is required and it ties up the driver, that could increase the cost. The third party in terms of zip, city, or state destination. And then the equipment with some visuals there. This is nice because pictures are always better, but we can pick a 53-foot dry van, which we did in our particular instance, a 53-foot reefer, 48-foot flatbed, an intermodal container as well to go on the rail, which is a very nice feature. But it also tells us on the right-hand side the dims of the trailer, but also the maximum weight in pounds of the cargo that can go on it. 42,500 pretty much being the magic number as it relates to U.S. highway and intermodal transportation. And we see that on the right-hand side. Click if it's hazardous, click to get a quote, and once again, off you go. We're going to stop here, but upon our return, continue with FTL, this time talking about operational considerations.